Going on to our second presentation, we've got Vasily Markovich from Cogni, and he's going to be talking about building scalable AI memory for agents across graphs and vectors. Give him a round of applause, people. I'm Vasily. I'm founder of Cogni. Um, I've been working in the big data field for around 10 years, and then I started my own startup sometimes uh, two, three years ago. I was on one of the first uh, Quadrant events talking and it was much smaller venue, much less people, so it's really impressive to see how far you guys have gone. So yeah, well done. Uh, also, you know, it's a, it's a much more higher stakes for me to be here today, so, so yeah, thanks again for the chance. Um, I'm gonna talk about Cogni. Um, I'm gonna talk about the problem of pure vector search and uh, how I actually got to this idea, how to actually improve the accuracy of AI apps and agents by creating another layer, another semantic layer on top of the graph and vector stores. So Cogni is a tool, it's a Python SDK. Um, you can easily access it on GitHub, it's open source, all the production level feature, authentication, authorization, um, yeah, distributed um, workflows, everything is available in the open source version and we have 200,000 pipeline runs this month only. Um, and that's been from maybe a thousand last October, November. Um, we have a lot of GitHub stars, so if you can add some stars, I forgot to add call to actions to my presentation, so I'm doing those now. Uh, but effectively, um, we are available, we are there, and at cogni.ai, you can also see a bit more about our blog and the website. So as the SDK that we built, uh, we tried to figure out how to actually get the accuracy of AI apps and applications to a state that we can actually use them in production. We've seen that with vector search, unless you're really optimizing for it in an individual pipeline, you're only getting around 60, 70%. These numbers behind me are based on Hotpot QA. Uh, we ran 30, 30 runs, uh, did the, the averages, tried to understand how to really compare and measure the accuracy uh, across agents using and sharing contexts. And all these results are available publicly in our GitHub under evals, so if you want to rerun it or check it, have a look. But for us, coming to these numbers was a big process and, and took like almost two years of just continuous innovating and looking into it. So what we were innovating about and what is actually Cogni about? Yeah. So um, we actually focus on a couple of things. We are focusing on um, adding a semantic layer on top of the graph and vector stores by adding several very important components for us. We add ontologies. So from the old days of semantic web, we can ingest all these RDF type ontologies or construct them automatically and then have a pretty much layer of truth that we can bind our LLM generated knowledge to. This helps reason and uh, this helps grounding the graphs and grounding the embeddings and gives us always a way to trace where did the information come from. Second thing that we are adding and trying to add is a state. Um, so we are always representing the state uh, of the agents um, as it evolves and we can always trace back the lineage of the state which helps as the agents diverge. So let's say in the coding context you might have someone trying to work on two different GitHub branches and those are two different states. So you need to reconcile at which state the one person is, the other person is and kind of managing this at scale becomes a bit difficult. So that's one of the, the, the things that we really focused on and the SDK supports. Then we have the composability and reasoning, right? So composability for us is the ability to create your own uh, vertical solutions and have your own set of tasks and pipelines that can really use the underlying technology and, and get you moving fast. Because we've seen some companies have a need for seven, eight different types of rag-like pipelines that uh, they need to just copy the code over, do small changes, do this, do that. So we build a system as a set of modular tasks and pipelines that work as any typical data engineering workflow that you can just add or remove from and these would just be effectively some Python functions. In this way we just transform some pydantic objects, move them from a state to another state and then store those in the adapters which can be any vector or graph store. We like using Quadrant when we need to do something at scale um, we use others when we need to do something locally, but I would definitely recommend Quadrant if, if running in production. Um, and um, that shameless plug is now done. So uh, when we're talking about the reasoning aspect, um, we have reasoners and retrievers that are algorith algorithms that help search. So instead of just doing the vector search or 
trying to do some type of a lookup of the similar items somewhere over there in the in the vector database. Um, we don't really rely only on that. We add graph elements on top. We do graph reasoning, understanding the nodes and the connections between them, going back to the vector store, and we have around 10 uh, types of retrievers doing everything from understanding concepts of time to really finding the right answer for a particular need. And these are also extendable and can be constructed. So we can definitely say that um, we can ingest from anywhere and anything. We worked a lot with DLT, uh, another Berlin startup, if you maybe he heard of it, um, and they support 30 plus traditional data sources. So our goal is to ingest relational data, semi-structured data, and then unstructured data and create these layers of the graph. So what's that for us? In a sense, um, this would represent the um, how Cognib really works. So we can put anything in it, right? Convos, text, PDFs, audio. We would normalize the data, just extract it, open it, and, and you know use the ingestion you usually use to get the data in. We would Cognify. Cognify represents turning this data into a semantic layer. So we would extract, extract triplets. We would extract summaries, chunks. Uh, we can add any type of a custom function there. We have now a new thing we added for this time reconciliation and, and sorting of the timestamps so you can really look up the documents with natural language uh, searches to find certain elements uh, in certain parts of time. And then in the next step, we have what we call the memory pipelines. So as we kind of extracted the data from all kinds of documents, structured and unstructured data, we then do these memory pipelines, which could be, let's say you haven't accessed a certain part of the data set for more than uh, three months. We can have a function that just goes and cleans up that data. So it means it's going to reduce the importance of that data or delete it outward. And we can add weights that signal that some data is more relevant, some data is less relevant. We can add the feedback layers that would effectively go and just change the data based on how you actually interacted with it and what was your feedback about the quality of the results. So we have this kind of RL, this reinforcement learning loops that can happen on the data and continuously change the data that you control and you add in this type of a pipeline. And we already provide some templates for this. Uh, some are more are coming. But for us, this is a, a crucial concept. So instead of your indexing becoming just reloading, reloading, and changing, you can now actually operate on the live data as you're interacting with it. The data is going to continue evolving. And then when you search for it, you can also include in that search feedback on, on how that is, is doing. And the agents or the apps can also pretty much provide this feedback and score the data or provide the, the weights themselves. So um, flexible data layer. And um, that's something that we are really trying to focus on. So um, trying to create this set of abstractions on top of each other. So this set of um, what you can think of as schemas in the relational database. We call them node sets. But in a sense, we are just kind of storing a representation of graph and embeddings on stacked layers on top of each other. And these layers are allowing us to understand, uh, query the data, isolate, and filter the data. And this uh, would let us, in effect, also isolate the concerns. Because if you do, so I don't know, you put everything in the vector store in the same index, you're going to end up in a trouble, right? Um, then you need to also build all of these isolation layers yourself. We try to provide these outside of the box, but our main goal is, you know, enable traditional companies by letting them actually ingest the data from relational stores, but also let them connect their PDFs, company knowledge, everything in between to these um, schemas, let's say semantic layers from the uh, relational stores, and then also add the feedback and the experiences of the individuals. All of these, uh, all of the systems allow you to actually do this per user, so we can create even graph and vector stores per user, store them, isolate them. We have the multi-tenancy system. So it allows you really personalization on an individual level. We are now also adding some support for multiple agents per user <laughs> because our users ask for that. But effectively, it, pretty, it works pretty well. And, and that's been something that people ask for a lot. So how does this actually work in your stack? So Cogni is a Python SDK. We have a CLI because everyone needs a CLI these days. But um, effectively, to actually run it, we have provide Docker images. And uh, we pre pretty much provide S3 bucket syncs and everything in between. 
we provide a distributed Cogni that can run on hundreds of containers at the same time. So you can run it and process um, gigabytes or terabytes of data uh, with your Kubernetes clusters, or just if it's a smaller data volume, you can store it and have some type of a VM on your cloud that you can just connect to your existing data warehouse or your ML stack. In the traditional world, like three, four years ago, I would maybe put Cogni in a feature store category. Uh, let's say, you know, features, um, feature store on steroids, if you want to put it that way. Now AI memory is a new term, so we're going with it. But uh, effectively, um, I would say that um, as a microservice, it can definitely work. It can also work as a set of lambdas on your system, and we've seen a lot of people running it on AWS that way. Uh, we are also trying to enable more, uh, more use cases soon. So how we help companies and others, um, effectively we have a cloud version that is, um, costs like 25 bucks a month. You get the access to the API, we store the data for you, and we manage all of the, the connections and, and the loading and the ingestion. That's just for people to get familiar and kind of try to use it, and we also want to kind of learn from you what, what you like. Um, bigger companies, we usually help with generating ontologies, kind of modeling their data layers because Large businesses have large issues with isolated data silos and, and volumes. Uh, and yeah, I'm always happy to talk about these or hear, your, hear about your, your use cases. And um, who we helped? We helped No Unity. Uh, it's another known Berlin company. They've been struggling with this problem for a while. So how to actually connect isolated IP addresses that are anonymized of their students and kind of transfer the knowledge between better students and worse students. The No Unity helps uh, students in high schools learn uh, better by giving them access to notes and helping them share content. They have millions and millions of users and we just took uh, Bremen, built a small uh, case study with them and showed that we could actually create a semantic layer on top of their really good data warehouse, by the way, uh, that uh, can actually connect the dots that it couldn't before. So uh, in practical terms, this, is, uh, uh, this was a pretty good success. We worked uh, also on um, yeah, a couple of uh, issues with the uh, University of Wyoming. So they have a case where students with disabilities uh, need help from teachers to get advice on how to actually learn best. So they need advice from recent research based on the best uh, practices. But if you ask the LLM about that, it's not going to know. So we created a semantic layer of all the research in that area and uh, pretty much allowed their agentic system to get the teachers the support they needed. Uh, we've did, done this quite quickly and they were quite happy with it. And uh, there is also a case study on, on our website about this if you're kind of curious on how to actually model this data and do it. And then finally, uh, Kipi, this was one of the original use cases. Um, I actually did this before even the Python SDK was out trying to model it as a long-term, short-term memory and all of those things that people talk about now. It worked not that well, <laughs> but it did, but it had 20,000 users, so it really helped me understand what type of problems really people face when deploying this at scale and in production. And uh, yeah, Kipi now evolved into a very successful company in London in the second iteration of it. So uh, yeah, I think uh, everyone's, uh, everyone has learned from this one. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much all from my side. Um, I'm going to keep this one short. Uh, since I forgot the call to actions, go to our GitHub, check out the, the, the repo. Uh, if you have some questions or you'd like to talk about AI memory, I'm happy to chat to you also about it. Um, but just to kind of wrap it up, the vector search for us just wasn't enough, especially for personalization, time awareness, and other use cases where the identity or the um, questions like what was our revenue in the past fiscal year, where our is unclear, definition of revenue is unclear, fiscal year, we don't know what that means in certain jurisdiction. These types of underlying semantic definitions that we could define and add to the system that's what we were trying to solve, and that's why we built Cogni as this combination of, of graph and embeddings and graphs inside the embeddings and other types of things to, to, to get past that. And yeah, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, and thank you for your attention.